Last section uh, of similarity, part three, we're looking at angle bisectors. And one thing about angle bisectors that seems counterintuitive is you can set up proportions between the sides and the pieces that are cut off. If you want to learn more about why, ask me about it. There's some really cool videos out on the internet that will prove this theorem true, or I can show you in class. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to tell you that it's true and make you believe me. So we'll see how much you trust me. What the angle bisector theorem tells you is that you can have this side over this piece cut off here, and that's going to be proportional to this over this piece that's cut off. So in this problem, what we're saying is that question mark over 9, so this over this, is proportional to or equal to the fraction of 8 over 6. And that's always going to be true when we have an angle bisector. An angle bisector, again, means that this angle and this angle are the same. This angle, this larger one, is being bisected or cut in half. So we have two equal pieces. To solve it, we always cross multiply and divide. So 9 times 8 is equal to 6 times, well, let's give this, let's call that x. Um, 6 times x. 9 times 8 is 72. And then we have 6x. Divide both sides by 6. And 72 divided by 6 is going to be 12. So x is equal to 12. So that makes this here 12. Now we expect this to be longer than the 8 based on this picture and based on the fact that 9 is a little bigger than 6. And our picture does work out nicely there. So this seems like a reasonable answer. Moving on to our next example straight across. Same basic pattern applies. This piece over this piece is equal to this piece over this piece. And we know that that's true because we have an angle being bisected. So that ratio will always apply. So again, let's call this x instead of question mark. A little harder to work with question mark. 20 over x is equal to, so outside over the bottom, is equal to 15 over 6. And when we cross multiply, 6 times 20 is equal to 15 times x. 6 times 20, 6 times 2 is 12, so 6 times 20 is 120, equals 15x. Divide both sides by 15, and 120 divided by 15 is going to come out to 8. So we think that x is going to be 8. 15 is a little longer, or 20 is a little longer than 15, and so 8 should be a little longer than 6. This checks out. Seems like a reasonable answer. You'll notice that I always check my answers at the end. You should do the same whenever you're doing your problems. Always go through that check. Usually the most common mistake is that your number ends up being smaller when it should have been bigger. So that quick common sense check will actually catch the most common errors. This one here is a little tricky because we don't have this piece right here. There's a few ways to solve it, uh, but I'm going to give you the simplest one. We're just going to call it something like W because we have an X here. We don't want to call it X. We already have an X. X means something in this problem. So let's just call this W and let's try to solve it. 8 over 6 equals 4 over our new made up variable w. So 8 over 6 equals 4 over w. And when we cross multiply we get 8w equals 4 times 6 which is 24. When we divide both sides by 8 we get w over here, and 24 divided by 8 is 3. So according to our calculations, this little side right here is 3. Now let's actually answer the question. Let's figure out what x is. We have to go from here all the way out to here, and we know that that whole length is 2x minus 9. But we also know that if this is 3 and this is 6, this whole length is also going to be 9. 
6 plus 3 is 9. So we can just say that this is equal to 9. And then let's solve it. Add 9 to both sides. 2x equals 18. And then when we divide both sides by 2, x is 9. Well, we didn't necessarily expect it to have that many 9s in the problem, but x is going to equal 9. So the way that we solve this one is we took the number that was easiest to get to, which was to figure out that that was 3, and then we solve the problem the rest of the way after that, instead of trying to do some tricky algebra. There are other ways to solve it, but I think that's the easiest one. And then our last one. We're going to actually use that same trick that we just used. We're going to ignore this big mess right here, and we're just going to call it W again. We know that 4 over 2 should be equal to this W over 1. And when we cross multiply here, we have 2w equals 4 times 1, which is 4. Divide both sides by 2, and w equals 2. And you're wondering, why are we doing this whole w business? Reason is, is we now know that this whole side length here is 2. And since this side, this 4, is uh, twice as big as 2 here, it seems reasonable that 2 should be twice as big as 1. So we know that this side is 2. We also know that this side, because the problem told us so, is negative 8 plus 2x. So now we can just take that negative 8 plus 2x and set it equal to what we know the answer is, which is 2. Then it's just a matter of doing a simpler algebra problem where we add 8 to both sides and get 2x equals 10. And divide both sides by 2, so we get x equals 5. So by solving it as two separate problems and putting it together only at the end, it actually makes it a lot easier. It makes the algebra a lot less complicated. So x equals 5. And that is the end of our Unit 6 notes.